Hi everyone, Mindflare Retro back with a not-so-retro video. Usually I'm talking about the rescue and repair of Commodore computers and accessories, but this time around I want to talk about something behind the scenes, a piece of equipment, and in particular the famous or infamous 858D hot air rework station. These things can be found in all the major online marketplaces eBay, AliExpress, Amazon, Banggood, you name it. You're going to find some version or variation of this on those sites. I got mine off of Amazon and I paid about $65 Canadian for it. So yes, it's inexpensive, but it works fairly well for most people. So if you're doing minor SMD work like recapping Amigas or even heating up shrink tubing, in my opinion, it's good value for the money. And yes, here comes the but. But, as we all know, you get what you pay for. Cheap price often means cheap quality. And it's no different here. There are a lot of videos on YouTube discussing the 858D and all the different versions of it out there. So at the risk of, yes, yet another 858D video, I thought I'd share my experience with what I did to make it a little bit safer. Now I hope I haven't lost any of my regular viewers. I know this is a little bit off topic, but it does concern a tool of the trade and it does concern safety. So I thought adding my two cents might help someone else. So if you stick around for the next few minutes, I will keep it short. Now if you're into Commodore 64 repair and mods and related electronics, then you're likely a subscriber to BWAX. YouTube channel. And if you're not, I highly recommend it. I will link it below. About a month ago, BWAC started a really interesting series with his 858D Plus rework station, where he continues the work of Madworm on EEV blog forum. BWAC does a thorough job of explaining Madworm's reverse engineering of the entire 858D Plus circuit design. Now, in the course of me commenting on those videos, BWAC mentioned to me, make sure that the tip of your 858D is actually grounded properly. And sure enough, mine wasn't. So I started doing a bit more research, checked out some more YouTube videos, in particular the one by Dave McAnulty and the one by Practical Engineering. And then I decided it was time to take it apart. Originally, I had not intended to make a video about this whatsoever, but I was keeping a photo record, taking pictures and posting them to a Flickr album, and sharing those with BWAC. And in return, he was offering a lot of great advice, which uh, helped me find a few other issues as well. And the deeper I got into it, the more I thought, you better start shooting some video too, because I think there's going to be a lot of people out there that might benefit from this. So one of the first things I looked at was the fuse. Now, the unit is functioning normally, so it's safe to assume there is a fuse in there. Now, I'm sure we've all seen or heard of Stranger Things, so I wanted to actually make sure there was a fuse present and it wasn't just bypassed. So yes, there was a fuse present, albeit a cheap no-name one. However, the fuse holder hadn't been secured properly to the chassis. And when I replaced the fuse holder cap, the entire fuse holder twisted in place and snapped off a lead. No surprise, it's a pretty cheap component and it'll have to be replaced. Disassembling the cover by removing 12 screws is really easy to do and gives you a clear look at everything inside. Here we can see the transformer is mounted to the metal chassis and the green earth wire comes in from the mains cable and is attached by a bolt to where the transformer connects to the chassis. But it stops there. There is no other earth grounding beyond this point. Meanwhile, on the blower side of things, there is another green ground wire that comes from the blower handle and is connected by a nut on the painted metal PCB mounting post, which is part of the metal faceplate. So yes, if there ever was a critical failure of the heater element, potentially the metal faceplate could become energized. Danger, high voltage. And adding insult to injury, the ground wire from the blower handle is very poorly soldered to the metal ring connector. And the ring connector is so 
poorly attached to the mounting post, I could swing it freely to touch the leg of the adjacent capacitor, and the nut itself I could tighten or loosen by hand with ease. 858D quality control. We put the K in quality. And of course, no sooner did I try to tighten that blower handle ground wire nut, the solder joint just snapped off the ring connector. So to summarize my last five minutes of babble, the tip of the hot air blower, which is metal and you poke around all your electronics, is not connected to the ground prong of my mains plug. So following BWAC's advice, I completed the ground connection from where the blower handle ground wire terminates at the PCB over to where the mains power cable ground wire terminates at the transformer and chassis. And to do this I made a simple add-on ground wire which will connect between those two points completing the ground connection from tip to tail. And here it is installed. Very simple, very effective, and we now have continuity. And now on to the next issue. In Dave McAnulty's video, he makes a note that the mains wiring is not connected correctly. In fact, it's reversed to what it should be. As well, the black mains wire, the live wire, was going straight to the PCB, not going through the fuse or the switch. And sure enough, it's no surprise, mine was suffering from the exact same miswiring issue. You can see the wiring here in this video clip of my unit where I've removed the back to take a look at the broken fuse holder. The white mains wire is the one going through the fuse. The black wire, which is in behind, the live wire, is going straight to the PCB without any fuse protection whatsoever. With this wiring arrangement, in an event that would cause the fuse to blow, the fuse isn't opening the circuit until after the load, so that leaves everything before that point potentially a main shock hazard. Of course I'm talking about the North American standard NEMA 5 plugs and outlets. By design these outlets enforce polarity, hot, neutral, and ground. Therefore any appliance plugging into this type of socket must be wired to conform to the polarity. So I decided on doing a little rewiring cleanup. I took the white neutral wire from the mains cable and disconnected it completely from the now broken fuse holder without going through the fuse. Next, I ran the black live wire from the mains cable through a brand new, much higher quality fuse holder and also upgraded the fuse to a brand name fuse as opposed to the mystery brand fuse that was in there originally. So, to recap what was accomplished here, I think we've made this 858D hot air rework station a little bit safer by applying three simple modifications. First, we properly grounded the metal blower tip to mains earth by adding a short additional ground wire from the PCB ground point where the blower handle ground wire terminates over to where the transformer is bolted to the chassis and where the mains ground wire is connected. Secondly, the live mains wire was rerouted through the fuse and the switch. So now if the fuse were to blow, the PCB and chassis beyond this point would no longer be a shock hazard. And third, an optional modification, although mandatory for me because mine broke when inspecting the fuse, upgrading the fuse holder to a higher quality one and replacing the fuse with a name brand fuse. Now, I don't know if modification number two, the rerouting of the mains wires, is actually necessary for this rework station in Europe or other regions. Perhaps someone can comment below and educate me on that. Now please keep in mind, big disclaimer, I'm not an electrician, I'm not a high voltage expert. I did some research and these modifications were comfortable for me to do and I did so at my own risk. So if anyone watching this decides to do what I did, please use common sense and all safety precautions. First and foremost, make sure the unit is unplugged before you decide to open it. And if you're not comfortable doing any of this, don't. I'd like to thank BWAC again for giving me the heads up on the grounding issue with the 858D hot air rework station. Also thanks to the other YouTubers Dave McAnulty and RC Engineer at Practical Engineering for their informative videos.
If you're interested in seeing more advanced modifications to the 858D, then do check out BWAX channel where he's doing some very interesting firmware mods. I'll include a link in the comments. Finally, if you're interested in seeing high resolution pictures of the safety mods I made to my 858D hot air rework station, then you can head on over to the Flickr album I created. I'll post a link below. There you'll find before and after pictures of the mod process and a lot of the pictures have captions and notes as well. Well, so much for keeping this video short. I know this was more tool talk than it was retro computer fix-it talk, but hopefully somebody watching this has benefited from it. Also, please comment if anyone else out there has an 858D and has had similar or even different experiences with it. I'd love to hear about it. And as always, thanks for watching, thanks for your time, and see you again soon.